Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this service of morning prayer on Tuesday, the 22nd of September, the day after the autumn equinox. So uh, who's here in the chat saying hello? It's uh, Celia. Hello. Good morning, Celia. And Anne. Good morning, Anne. And Moira. Hello, Moira. And Angela. Hello, Angela. And Jackie and Linda, hello to you both and to Chris. So hello to all of you who've said hello in the chat and to everybody who's lurking without saying hello. Uh, good morning and welcome to you too. And of course, to all those who will watch this uh, service later on Facebook. Um, I think uh, my setup is now working. Sorry for the slight delay in starting. All my settings were wrong because I had to do a different kind of service earlier last week and hadn't changed everything back, but I think we're back now. Uh, so morning prayer for Tuesday, the 22nd of September. The service sheet I've linked in the chat window, so if you want to follow along, you can link to that uh, piece of text there and follow along with me. Um, there's no one else in the church with me at the moment, so um, if you want to say all the verses with me as we go along, or just the even verses as we normally do when we're in person, then of course that's all fine. Or if you just want to sit and listen meditatively whilst drinking your morning coffee, of course that would be a delightful way to remember that we are in the presence of God who loves us. And it's our calling to give thanks for him, for his creation, and for that love which he created and which we share with him and each other. Uh, sadly, this morning, we haven't got a, uh, um, a saint that we're honouring, so I don't have a great big amount of text to tell you about, so we're just going to go straight into the service itself. Jackie's saying that she's got a funny buzz. Let's see if I can figure out what the funny buzz is before we continue. Testing. Oh, I've got a funny buzz as well. Let's try. Testing. All right, I think that should have fixed it. It'll get, give you, take you about 40 seconds to catch up, but when you do, if you could tell me whether that has repaired the problem, I just restarted the microphone, um, and that seems to have fixed it at my end. Hopefully it will have fixed it at your end. Oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins, and heals all your infirmities. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion. Who satisfies you with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding, 
and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Everyone's saying the sound is fine now, so we'll continue with Psalm number 32. Happy the one whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is covered. Happy the one to whom the Lord imputes no guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. For I held my tongue, my bones wasted away through my groaning all the day long. Your hand was heavy upon me day and night. My moisture was dried up like the drought in summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and my iniquity I did not hide. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all the faithful make their prayers to you in time of trouble. In the great water flood, it shall not reach them. You are a place for me to hide in. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Be not like horse and mule which have no understanding, whose mouths must be held with bit and bridle, or else they will not stay near you. Great tribulations remain for the wicked, but mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy all who are true of heart. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Psalm 36. Sin whispers to the wicked in the depths of their heart. There is no fear of God before their eyes. They flatter themselves in their own eyes, that their abominable sin will not be found out. The words of their mouth are unrighteous and full of deceit. They have ceased to act wisely and to do good. They think out mischief upon their beds and have set themselves in no good way. Nor do they abhor that which is evil. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness stands like the strong mountains, and your justice like the great deep. You, Lord, shall save both man and beast. How precious is your loving mercy, O God! All mortal flesh shall take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They shall be satisfied with the abundance of your house. 
They shall drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in your light shall we see light. O oh, continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your righteousness to those who are true of heart. Let not the foot of pride come against me, nor the hand of the ungodly thrust me away. There are they fallen, all who work wickedness. They are cast down and shall not be able to stand. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the first book of Kings, from chapter 8. Solomon offered as sacrifices of well-being to the Lord 22,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people of Israel dedicated the house of, of the Lord. The same day, the king consecrated the middle of the court that was in front of the house of the Lord, for there he offered the burnt offerings and the grain offerings and the fat pieces of the sacrifices of well-being, because the bronze altar that was before the Lord was too small to receive the burnt offerings and the grain offerings and the fat pieces of the sacrifices of well-being. So Solomon held the festival at that time, and all Israel with him, a great assembly, people from Lebo Hamath to the Wadi of Egypt, before the Lord our God, for seven days. On the eighth day, he sent the people away, and they blessed the king and went to their tents joyful and in good spirits because of all the goodness of the Lord that the Lord had shown to his servant David and to his people Israel. When Solomon had finished building the house of the Lord and the king's house and all that Solomon desired to build, the Lord appeared to Solomon a second time as he had appeared to him at Gibeon. The Lord said to him, I have heard your prayer and your plea which you made before me. I have consecrated this house that you have built and put my name there forever. My eyes and my heart will be there for all time. As for you, if you will walk before me as David your father walked, with integrity of heart and uprightness, doing according to all that I have commanded you, and keeping my statutes and my ordinances, then I will establish your royal throne over Israel forever. As I promised your father David, saying, there shall not fail you a successor on the throne of Israel. If you turn aside from following me, you or your children, and do not keep my commandments and my statutes that I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut, cut Israel off from the land that I have given them, and the house that I have consecrated for my name I will cast out of my sight. And Israel will become a proverb and a taunt among all people. This house will become a heap of ruins. Everyone passing by it will be astonished and will hiss. And they will say, why has the Lord done such a thing to this land and to this house? And then they will say, because they have forsaken the Lord their God, who brought their ancestors out of the land of Egypt and embraced other gods, worshipping them and serving them. Therefore, the Lord has brought this disaster upon them. Continue with our canticle, A Song of Peace. Spirit of God, teach us your ways, that we may walk in the paths of peace. Come, let us go up to the mountain of God, 
to the house of the God of Jacob, that God may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For the law shall go out from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. God shall judge between the nations and shall mediate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O people of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Spirit of God, teach us your ways that we may walk in the paths of peace. Our second reading is from the book of Acts, from chapter 16, in which we find Paul and Silas in prison. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights and, rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and all your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in the house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. When morning came, those magistrates sent the police. The magistrates sent the police saying, let those men go. And the jailer reported the message to Paul, saying, The magistrate sent word to let you go, therefore come out now and go in peace. But Paul replied, They have beaten us in public, uncondemned men who are Roman citizens, and have thrown us into prison. And now are they going to discharge us in secret? Certainly not. Let them come and take us out themselves. The police reported these words to the magistrates, and they were afraid when they heard that they were Roman citizens. So they came and apologized to them. And they took them out and asked them to leave the city. After leaving the prison, they went to Lydia's home. And when they had seen and encouraged the brothers and sisters there, they departed. Now we have our responses. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the paths of your commandments that I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law.
our gospel canticle, the Benedictus. In your tender compassion, O God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, who has come to his people, the born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. To shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death. And to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. In your tender compassion, O God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Now this is one of those mornings where I haven't really felt moved to speak about the readings very much. So I won't say very much, just to, you know, highlight in the earlier reading the song, the, um, the story of Solomon building and consecrating the temple, um, just how many animals were sacrificed to consecrate the temple, you know, uh, over 100,000 sheep, 120,000 sheep, I think it was. And there were so many that there wasn't enough room on the altar inside the temple, so they did it on the courtyard outside. Um, so it's, I think, probably a good thing that we aren't in that sort of religion anymore, that we can speak directly to our Father and ask for his forgiveness without having to uh, sacrifice animals, literally sacrifice animals in order to appease God our Father. And that, of course, is because of the transformation of the religion that Jesus brought, the transformation that he brought by offering himself uh, in the place of all those sacrifices that the people were making on their own behalf. Jesus made them for us on the cross. And of course, we also see that the, the response to that sacrifice in our second reading in the book of Acts, when the jailer, who is uh, really upset that an earthquake has demolished part of the jail and he thinks all the prisoners have escaped, but of course they have chosen not to. They, Paul and Silas, who know that they're innocent, just remain in the prison. We don't hear about the other prisoners, but Paul says that they're all there, so presumably they stayed as well somehow. I'm not quite sure why, um, but the jailer, as a result of that miracle, uh, converts to follow uh, Christ, to become a believer in God. And he is, the word is spoken to him and he responds and is immediately baptized with his whole family. And that can be how it is for many people coming into faith, that something dramatically good and unexpected happens to them when they were expecting a nightmare and something terrible to happen, perhaps because they thought that they had failed or done something wrong in some way, 
and were unworthy to continue to live or unworthy of God's blessing or favour, and yet God demonstrates his love for them anyway. In fact, this is the time when people are most able to experience God's love, is when they think that they have done something terribly wrong and are no longer worthy of it. And that suddenly, when by surprise, they often feel that love and are transformed and converted by it. And that's probably the only way that anybody can be sure that God is out there and God loves them is when they have one of these experiences when they went from being someone who thought that they were unworthy to somebody who really experiences God's love and can therefore never deny again that God is there and that he loves them. So let's pray that we have that experience of God's love and that we are able to repent of those things which we should not have said or done. And of course, for all of us, there are many things like that in our lives and we know what they are. And we desperately, I think, want to make amends if we can find a way of doing it. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we know you are present with us. You are always with us. You knew us before we were born. You knew all our days. You knew how we would fail. And yet, you love us anyway. You warned the people of Israel to keep your commandments, and they failed. And yet, you continued to love them enough to send them your son. Help us to feel and know your love and forgiveness. May we know the peace that Paul and Silas felt in the midst of an earthquake. May our response to trouble and difficulty like Paul and Silas be to sing hymns of praise. May we respond to stress and difficulty by offering out the love that we feel in our hearts, both to you, Lord, and also to all of those around us in our community and our family. We pray for those who are leading us in this time of trial. As many places in the country return to forms of lockdown. As we struggle to find ways to sustain our economy, our prosperity, when we cannot easily meet with each other. Grant our leaders wisdom, knowledge, good counsellors, the ability to listen, the ability to be humble, to admit mistakes, to ask for forgiveness, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
We pray for the people working for the NHS, for doctors and nurses and orderlies, for those involved in logistics, management, those driving ambulances, and of course, chaplains in our hospitals who have been standing ready, preparing for potential new waves of COVID cases. Sustain them, Lord, in this crisis that doesn't seem to have an end. May they find your love within them. That despite the earthquakes around them, your love remains. Just as Paul did not take the opportunity to save himself, but remained by God's will until his purpose there was fulfilled. May all those we love and care for and those who serve us maintain their good will and their desire to reach out to those around them despite their own difficulties. And we lift up before you, Lord, those we know who are in difficulty, those we know who are ill. And we speak their names, whether aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your gracious mercy, hear our prayer. God, who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love, Grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel, that always abiding in you, they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So thank you to everyone who joined us for that service of morning prayer. 
I see that uh, June and Jane came in and uh, said hello uh, later on. So welcome to you as well. And, and uh, I hope that you and all the others who have shared this service with us will have a good and uh, blessed week this week, whatever you may be doing. Our next service is tomorrow at St. Irvine. There will be a service of Holy Communion at two o'clock. And then on Thursday morning at 9 a.m., we will have morning prayer as usual in St. Morgan Church, which you, of course, in both those services, still very uh, welcome to join us. You are still able to come and join us for those services. Uh, and there's no sign at the moment of the government or the church changing the rules on church services. So uh, please do come and take advantage of social distanced services uh, if you are able to do so. Uh, so then I offer you God's blessing. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and all those you love and care for this day and always. Amen. And so until next time, I bid you farewell and uh, see you later this week. <laughs>